In today's video, we're going to check out some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. Here's what AI thinks kids looked like in the early 1800s, early 1900s, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, 2000s. And here's where things begin to go downhill rapidly. 2010, 2020, somebody make it stop. We can't go down this road anymore. This is insanity. I will be long gone before we get here, hopefully. I just think we're at a fork in the road and we can't keep going down the road we've been on. Go outside, put down the devices. This is crazy. We don't want Skynet to become a reality. This is not, this is not normal. This is not what life is supposed to be like. Let's get out of upside down land right now. I mean, that's actually a really crazy thing to take in because I've never would have thought about doing that with AI generation, uh, AI generating photos. So I really enjoyed this particular topic because there's so many things that it picks up that I find interesting. And I don't know if maybe these are really not AI generated photos like they claim to be, but it's very interesting to see the progression on how it, it's seen people in the past, you know, as far as clothing. And if you look at each progression as the decades go by, their those kids, their smiles become less and less and less until like full technology takes over. That's really, really creepy. But I'm not going to say that it's just kids having fun in these eras because I'm pretty sure if you were to type in people having fun in these certain decades, it would eventually also show that because I know there's a lot of adults that are just as glued to their phones or their um, digital headsets, all kinds of stuff. So it's not just kids, but it's sad that kids are more into that than adults and it's just going to get worse. So hopefully we have something that maybe falls in the line where we don't have people just constantly searching for dopamine on digital devices and maybe we can start having fun other ways that's not being drawn into digital media. Don't get me wrong, I love digital media. I'm doing digital media right now by watching these TikToks. This is absorbing a, a great portion of my day away, but it's fun and it's something that I do enjoy doing. It causes a great level of dopamine for me personally and I'm sure whoever else is watching. So it's kind of hard to say that this is how kids are because I know plenty of adults that pretty much do the same. So it's just scary all around. <laughs> I was anticipating some horror to happen there. But to be fair, I already knew how this video was going to end. I have seen it beforehand because I didn't want anything too nasty to happen. But I just wanted you to feel the same kind of anxiety that I was feeling while I was watching it for the first time. Because I don't know if that was a real crocodile or alligator. But dang, that was terrifying. And that bang at the end. Whew, whew. Why are there lights on all of the birds?
I'm pretty sure that that's just like sun reflecting off of the bird's feathers. I could be completely wrong. It does look like plane signals flashing on the birds, but I'm almost certain that it is just light reflection. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think because it did look like lights. I've also always found this interesting. I remember when I first seen this movie, uh, I think it was called uh, Into the Abyss, or it, it's an older 90s movie, but um, they basically go underwater and they have to submerge themselves in this liquid that they can breathe in, and it always used to freak me out when I watched it because they would struggle a little bit trying to breathe in it, and then they finally could breathe, and it was just like, wow, that's pretty crazy that we actually do have such a liquid that is there that I'm not sure why we don't use more of in certain situations like when we're going underwater diving and things like that I'm sure there's science behind it I'm not aware of everything about these characters is the same the only difference is the era you know these characters get recycled so much all of those old celebrities from the 1900s have young characters today that are pushing out agendas Right here, they look exactly alike. So this makes me wonder if reincarnation is a real thing. Maybe celebrities do have this form of reincarnation to be able to do this and just fit themselves in a modern era. I don't know, though. Ice Spice is a complete 180 from Lucy. That's for sure. I, I don't know if that would be the same or not, but who knows? This could be a potential case of it. The, the similarities are very, very canny, but I don't know about this one. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video, and I make a video like this almost every day, and it'd be awesome to see you come back again tomorrow. A wave of extreme heat that comes from nowhere. It's one of the U.S. military's newest non-lethal weapons, an electromagnetic beam that emits an odorless, invisible, and silent blast of heat. This is a military area. Move away from the perimeter. I say again, this is a military area. Move away from the perimeter. Their new active denial system boasts a reach far beyond any other non-lethal system. Well, it's a versatile system. Uh, and it has a, a range of uh, non-lethal capability that we can't even come close to with any of our fielded systems today that are in our military forces. About seven football fields to give it some perspective. <laughs> it felt like opening up an oven door almost mixed with a sting from about my sternum to my neck. So like you started really feel it on my neck before I had to kind of instinctively jump out of the way. This weapon under development for 15 years has yet to be used in the field. The technology has attracted safety concerns Though the U.S. military says the rays do not penetrate the skin and pose no health risk. I don't believe that. I bet that thing is causing all kinds of cancers and tumors in people that are testing that on. That's very scary technology. And the simple fact that they haven't used it in the field makes me feel like they want to use it in the field. And they are preparing to use it in the field because they want to. Like, that's just what Army and War wants. They want to use their toys. But um, that, that can't be safe. For you to be able to feel that from seven football fields away, that's ridiculous. The amounts of radiation and microwave energy that's just being blasted into you cannot be safe at all. I just left these on the entire day. Um, the like two and a half hour battery pack you can plug into a fatter battery, so I never ran out of battery power. And after a couple of hours, of running around the streets of New York, as in not in a controlled environment, my brain sort of clicked and it just forgot that I was looking through cameras and screens. And it just, it, it took what it saw as reality. And that is where this, this, that's where the, that profound moment came from. And what occurred to me as I was sitting there in Times Square on a bench, strangers all around me, the real world moving all around me, but I had like a big screen up where I was watching a Mr. Beast video. And then over here, I had this keyboard that I could interact with. And over here, I had my iMessages. And over here, I had my Apple TV and then all of my apps. And they're floating in Times Square in the middle of New York City. 
They're floating there and I'm actually there. And there's actual humans around me. And in that moment, I was like, holy shit, this is it. This is the future of computing that everyone's been promising for like the last 15 years. This is something that like, let me like truly peek into where we're at, where all of this is going. This isn't the, like the future of AR or VR. This is the, I think this is the future interface for all computing. That is what it'll be. In the morning, you won't remember your phone. You put it on and then that's it. And it's like, hold on, I've got a call. Hey, what's up, mom? I'll call you back. You look great, by the way. Oh, there we go. Getting closer and closer to those AI generated images that we just seen. I'm, I mean, I'm all for AR and VR as far as it being a great home device. I do have a few headsets myself for the family if we ever want to just sit down and or walk around and play games. It's really fun. It's really immersive. But it's not safe, I don't think, to have outside of home boundaries. I think that there could be a lot of bad things that can happen. You got thieves. You got accidental malfunctions in the middle of very important situations that you don't need that, like walking down a road. Um, there's all different types of errors that could happen that I'm sure will get perfected and eventually these type of glasses or goggles will become no different than a pair of regular glasses that you can just put on your face and the whole interface is there. And that's gonna be a really scary time because that's going to absorb a lot of people's attention. That means that someone could be looking you right in your face and have these glasses on and not even paying attention to you as they are pretending to listen to you because they're watching YouTube right in front of your face, basically, you know? And that's going to lead to more people's intention spans going, and it's just going to be a really scary time. Are you guys ready to talk about how your eyeballs are just part of your brain? Do you know what this is? This is a poor representation of the entire universe, okay? Now, here's a question. What if... What you think of as your sense of self, your consciousness, your imagination, all the stuff that goes on in your head. What if all of that stuff is just this part of the brain? Kind of doing what this part of the brain does. What I'm implying is what if the brain is a not a generational organ? It doesn't generate things. What if the brain is a sensory organ? It senses things. What if things that are complex enough can tap into something fundamental underlying the nature of reality and the universe at large? You're part of all this. The complexity within you that leads to your sense of self-consciousness and creativity is part of all this. And who's to say that those things are not fundamental to all this and the things that allow you to access them are just that, things that allow you to access something that was already there. What you guys really probably aren't ready to talk about is what if this isn't the only kind of complexity that can do that? You hear about things like the mycelial network, like magic mushrooms, and how people can have seemingly shared experiences when they enter into those mental places, when they alter the way the sensory organ works. Perhaps they're tapping into a different part of that thing that is fundamental. What I'm saying is your mind's eye might not be very dissimilar from your regular eye. It's just looking in a different direction. Really, it's just a different way of looking at our existence. And here's the thing. If your consciousness, if your self is just something you're tapping into, that means it doesn't go away when you die. This never dies, especially if you think of as time as being just something we experience to help us make sense of all of it, not something necessarily fundamental. And a lot of science backs up that idea that time is not actually fundamental. It's just a trick of our human cognizance. You're just a bubble in an ocean of fundamental consciousness. And so when your bubble pops, that ocean is still there. You're just joining into the ocean. And you're not an individual bubble anymore, but you're still there. This was really interesting because it did bring up a good bunch of questions. And it actually ultimately led me to one question that's totally off topic from this video that I kind of would like to know some information about. Uh, I personally, I have never met anyone in my life that has been blind since birth. I've only known some people that were blind after birth because of some accident or just due to growing up and poor eyesight just started to happen. I would like to know a, 
a person that was blind at birth, how do they imagine things? Like, how, how do they have the ability to imagine things? Can they imagine things? What do they see when they imagine things? You know, like, uh, I know one individual that lost his eyesight when he was in his 30s. But he had eyesight up until mid-20s because it started to decline really bad. And he can now no longer see, but he can still imagine. He can still see things. What does a person from birth not being able to see see when they imagine? I know it's totally off topic to this video, but I would really like to know. Something extremely strange caught my eye when I was watching the Grammys last night. So Dodge A Cat pulled up and I noticed that she had a bunch of new tattoos. But one in particular caught my eye and it was the one on her forehead. And it reads the Lara Findicoglu. And when you look her up, she's a young fashion designer who puts spells and witchcraft into her clothing and she even says it herself. With my clothes, I kind of do witchcraft because I believe in reincarnation. Like obviously my spirit chose this body and knew it was going to be a fashion designer. Kind. And the deeper you look into her artwork or clothing or designs, whatever you call it, everything is just super dark. She also hosted this dark themed Versailles party. And last year her runway was hosted in what looked like to be an abandoned church or warehouse. And I thought they played music during a runway show, but hers, she played the sound of water dropping. Listen to this. I guess I guess I'm not on the level of wealth to understand these dress designs or these outfit designs that they like like literally that last lady was I thought at first it was just like metal bracing over the body but it was silverware it was knives and spoons and forks it's just like multi-million dollar people are doing the most are they trolling us are they just throwing on shows for us to question their wealth and things like that because i don't ever see them well some of them during like the grammys and the oscars things like that they do wear some off the wall clothes but i never see famous people just walking around in silverware like that with knives and spoons all over their body they have to be trolling us that it has to be an inside joke of all the wealthy people, they're like, ha ha, look at these people down here looking at our crazy design clothes thinking that we're doing some crazy things or something. I don't know. It just, it's so weird to me. It just seems so weird. And I've noticed that growing up all of my life that wealthy people have some very, very, very strange hobbies. And I mean, hey, I'm all down for a good hobby, 100%, but it's so weird. <laughs> Before Earth even existed, you had Mercury, Venus, which was in the position we're in now, and then you had Tiamat. Earth wasn't here yet. Tiamat had two moons. It probably had more than that, but the two we know of is the moon we have now and Mars. Even mainstream astrophysicists agree that Mars was probably a moonlet that orbited a much larger planet based on the red elliptical orbit that it has. Tiamat in the Enuma Elishan, the seven types of creation, gets impacted by another object that was orbiting another star. Mm. So our solar system had gravitationally attracted attracted a rogue solar system, so to speak. And it was a collision that happened, which made Tiamat explode. When Tiamat exploded, a huge chunk swung away with all that land and organic material and recoalesced as the Earth. The moon then was put into place to balance the wobble. Mars grabbed its own crazy elliptical orbit around the sun. And so Earth has weird anomalies inside of it that go back hundreds of millions of years. And people are like, how did this hammer, this 200 million year old hammer, because they can tell by the depth in these mines, mm -hmm. how did this pottery get down here? Three 300 million year old piece of pottery it's not from earth it's when earth was part of tiamat you're looking at a relic from a whole another civilization when we were part of another planet nobody's talking about this hey i know you guys really aren't a huge fan of billy but um i did enjoy this video i, I did i do watch some of his videos in passing while i'm scrolling through tiktok finding other videos for us to react to and everything um, I kept this one in here because I did like it. I liked the explanation of the old hammer and the bowls coming from a different planet would make sense as to why we're finding such ancient relics that we supposedly aren't supposed to have within that time frame.
it, it's a really cool tie together that I like personally. So Dubai is experiencing some bad weather, right? And when you see these flashes in the sky, the flashes of lightning, you'll see pyramids in the sky and they are scattered all over the sky, you guys. And depending on what type of flash that we get, you see what I'm saying? Look at that. Look at that one. Look at that one. What is this? And there's some that's off in the distance as well, you guys. But only in certain flashes, we're able to see that. Y'all see that? And it gets even crazier. Look. It gets even crazier. Check this one out. Check this one out. Watch. Shit crazy, y'all. All these crazy things happening around this time. And it's pouring over there. That purple lightning, that plasma. Look at that. Look at this. Y'all, look at that, y'all. Y'all see that? Look. It's going back into it. It's closing. It's merging with the top of the pyramid. The, whoa. You guys see that? That's crazy, y'all. What is going on? It's like an upside down world, you guys. Look. But yeah, you guys, it's literally like an upside down world, huh? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? It's crazy, man. In the pyramid in the sky. And again, things are getting more interesting. An upside down pyramid in the sky, which literally I believe that's an upside down world. That's crazy. As above, so below. That's the real definition as, as above, so below. Or the six and the nine, 69. So what do you guys think of this video, y'all? Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during this interesting time. That looked pretty convincing. I'm not going to lie. That almost was too good to be true of footage and it makes me wonder if it wasn't fake or not but i'm gonna say that that was probably real because it did look extremely real and it makes me wonder i've noticed here in america we have had a lot of off weather lately like this past year 2023 to 2024 already we're in the second month of 2024 and we've had weird weather experience already that's out of the norm for us currently. I've lived in this state that I'm currently in for a long time now and eh, it just makes it just makes me wonder if maybe there's some kind of weather modification going on across the globe <laughs> or across the world or across earth. It makes me wonder if there's some kind of weather modification going on across Earth that government officials are aware of and they're doing something to the weather to manipulate it like this. Because that would explain the UFOs because those are probably the devices that cause the storms and things like that. I don't know. It's, it's just I noticed a lot of weird weather patterns recently within the past year and it's making me question some things as far as like what's going on because is it aliens is it governmental officials something's happening out there and it seems like more and more as 2023 progressed falling into 2024 we are getting more and more alien slash ufo slash uap sightings and i have a feeling by the end of this year we're gonna have some crazy information you know that thing how they say the beetles in ancient Egypt, they're like super sacred. I didn't know this. You, you never seen like how there's like a bird, an owl, there's like a dog head, cats, whatever, hieroglyphics. Yeah. One of them is a beetle. Now that beetle symbol is really important because it might solve the creation of the pyramids. A beetle though? Why? How? So this is where it gets wild. Yeah. Now in Russia, there's a scientist and he was studying was a beetle that you could find out in Egypt and out in like Africa. So he was looking at it one day and he was examining the wings. And you notice, right? He noticed when the beetles fly, it's almost as if like they hover. Mm -hmm. When he was examining it, the wing touched on top of the other wing and it fell off like right away. What he did, he collected a whole bunch of these beetles and he created like with the wings a, a board. And what he was able to do mm. was he was able to make almost like a hovering surface. What? I left this video in here because I did find this a little interesting. I looked up the beetles that there are in Egypt 
and there is a great majority of like dung type beetles that live there. And I find that kind of fascinating because what if, and I'm not saying this is how it was done, but what if that is one of the ways that the pyramids were built? What if they had hundreds of thousands of these beetles, they lined a path for them to carry these blocks, and I know this is going way off the top, uh, they had these beetles carry the stones of the pyramid to where they needed to go. And I'm talking about thousands upon thousands of them. They would be able to move through the dirt. They can vibrate their wings and they can cause a certain type of movement and vibration that would help move the stones. It, it kind of makes sense when you're talking about a mass of maybe a million of these beetles working on a single stone, moving it from one section to the next. And that's not a bad like cons that's not a bad theory i don't think that it's one of the one crazy theory to think of but it's pretty far out there for sure i know okay the hubble telescope <laughs> launched back in 1990 four years later 1994 we get that image right there okay you know, shot back down to Earth from the Hubble telescope. Now, what did NASA do? Of course, they tried to hide it, but it didn't work. Now, by the way, that picture right there, my uncle gave me that picture. Um, it was taken by a photographer at Ellington Airfield of the Hubble telescope. You know, you guys know my uncle worked at NASA, and he told me that NASA, you know, does in fact try to hide images and anomalies from the public okay i just wanted to include that little tidbit of information in my video today but check it out i mean look you can see towers pillars caves i mean it looks like a man-made building okay this galactic city in the middle of the universe i mean this is mind-blowing like you know i thought it was fake but this is like i said guys this is a real nasa image leaked to the public and I don't know why I've never heard about it. I was watching another channel last night, and they covered the topic here, and I was blown away. I mean, it's quite beautiful, actually. And the crazy thing is, okay, when it was leaked back in 1994, it was one day after Christmas. So was that intentional? You know, because they're calling it, you know, the city of God. You know, so to me, I mean, I don't know, was that someone at NASA that, uh, you know, one is basically trying to send us, you know, the American people, the earth, the world for that, for you know, the world, really, when we're talking about the Hubble telescope, are, are they trying to send us a message? I mean, what are we looking at here, guys? Crazy. I mean, uh, it reminds me of like ancient ruins, like on Mars or the moon or, you know, uh, or any planet for that matter, but but check it out. And it has like these weird domes and tower, almost like a watchtower. And you can you can actually see different rooms. And I mean, to me, there there's too many there's too many shapes and there's too much geography there. It doesn't look natural. Okay. And again, it's very beautiful to look at. Um. You know, when I saw it, I just kind of stared at it for a while. I was like, wow, that is that is absolutely beautiful. But, uh, I mean, right there, there's the original image right there. I did add a little bit of a filter. But like I said, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you the original NASA image untouched, untouched. I mean, right there, guys. Here we go. We're going to zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> I mean, that to me... <sighs> I don't know. That does not look natural. And why Why would something like that be float, literally floating in space, right? And right there, you see that little tower? And is that like a little moon? Maybe they have two moons behind them? It looks like a city. You know, like something you would see like on Google Maps. I mean, totally crazy. Like there's a little tunnel right there, some caves and... um, Almost like a V-shaped roof back there. You know, some type of awning. I mean, to me, <laughs> that looks like Asgard from Thor. But uh, all jokes aside, the Hubble telescope was released in 1990. It makes me wonder if they, well, they, they say it's leaked to the public. It's not leaked to the public. It was provided to the public. And it just makes me wonder if it was for, uh, because I don't know if people were complaining at the time of the Hubble's telescope being released because it cost like $1.5 billion in the 90s. 
I, I have a feeling that there was a, probably a huge uproar with people and the expense that it cost because it was funded by the United States government. It just makes me wonder if they were like, yeah, let's, let's give them a fake image to show them that there's something out there so they don't feel like their tax dollars being washed down the drain. You know, that's kind of what it seems like to me. But I could be completely wrong. I also, I, I know they're, they're saying that it looks like a place in Sky, and it does. Like I said, it kind of resembles Asgard a little bit. It could also very well, if it is something, it could be a ship. That could definitely be a huge spaceship. It could be very intricate and very detailed. It doesn't necessarily have to be a plane to walk on. That could all just be one massive ship that we're seeing with all the intricate details and antennas and the moons orbiting it, which would be like drone pilots circling it and everything. But that is cool looking. I'm not going to lie. It's an amazing image. It looks extremely fake to me, but it is cool. I just think that NASA was out to calm people down and to also help make them help the people further believe in their project. I, I do not believe in NASA necessarily. I think that NASA is one giant money laundering operation. I really do. I think that it is a company full of lies and it is a media stunt to just show us what they think we want to see. But they're doing a really poor job in today's age convincing people. And it's coming more and more out that they aren't quite what they say they are. We're going to need further proof eventually. Eventually, people are going to start standing up and questioning NASA. And they're going to be demanding more evidence. If this is a tax paid organization where we pay billions of dollars in taxes every year towards this organization, why does the people not have the right to enjoy a rocket ship ride to space without having to pay for it? I know there's a lot of people in the world, but not everybody would do a rocket ship ride. I would be one of those people that would do a rocket ship ride because I need, I, for me to believe that we are on a globe or on a flat earth, I need to see it with my own eyes. There's not an amount of science, negotiations, or words that's going to make me believe that we're on a globe or a flat earth. I have to see it for me to know. And I can, I can go off of what you're saying. It could be flat. It could be round. I don't know. I've not seen it. Even if there's science that says it's flat and there's science that says that it's round, it's still the same science by the people that are lying to us, you know? So... I have mixed feelings about that, but NASA, full of lies. I don't have mixed feelings about that, for sure. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here, and with that being said, have a good day.